Overpriced Coffee at the Movies, John Wick, Chapter 3, an essay written by David Charles Vitella. Names have been changed to maintain anonymity. Four-star rating system, rewatchability rating system. I listen to a lot of podcasts and to a lot of music. On Netflix, I mostly click on stand-up specials. That's because I'm usually writing or drawing, and I need something I can ignore. So, the answer is no. I have not binged on the latest Netflix show, nor am I caught up with the latest HBO sensation. That's to say that I rarely watch movies outside of the movie theater. If I start a movie, DVD, or streaming, it's only a matter of time before I remember something I'm supposed to have finished. So, I'll stop the movie and go back to work. But, if I go to the movies, I know I have two to three hours to spare, and I can give the picture the attention it deserves. I never know when I'll be able to squeeze in the movie. Typically, it's at the end of the day if I've crossed out everything in my to-do list and I have two or three hours before my bedtime. Sometimes, though rarely, it happens in the middle of the day. On those specific days, it's usually that I have something to do at night, but I have the afternoon free. So I'll squeeze in something I've been meaning to watch for some time. My most common movie going time is Sunday morning. For the most part, Sundays are my me-time day, my self-love day. On a typical Sunday, I check movie times the second I wake up, and then I rush to the movies, buy a ticket, and have my first coffee of the day during the early bird showing. But the point I'm trying to make is, I don't know when I'll have the time for a movie. Therefore, I just go to the movie theater when I have the time to catch a movie. I don't text anyone to catch a movie with me, and I rarely make movie plans with anyone. Sometimes, I fall in the trap of accepting a movie invitation because the subject of upcoming movies came up. Therefore, I forego talking about upcoming movies I plan to watch. It might sound harsh, but here's the thing. When you make art, time is weird. It travels at a very strange speed. You know when you're at work and you keep looking at the clock? and it barely moves. Making art has the opposite effect. You'll be drawing, think you've been drawing for 10 minutes, look at the time, and notice you've been drawing for two hours. But there's more to it than that. See, I have a way of thinking that doesn't allow for, I'll just watch it later, or I'll just buy it next time. I have almost no amount of FOMO. I get something different, acceptance. Or to put it more frankly, indifference. If I haven't watched something, or haven't gotten something within the reasonable time, I realize I could do without it. My mind goes from, that's something I really want, to, why would I want it now? I'm doing just fine. Happens most often with movies and TV shows. I've yet to watch The Wire, or Lord of the Rings, or Game of Thrones, or A Star is Born. And I don't think I ever will. But it also happens with material things. N64 was the last system I ever had. When I didn't get the other systems, I realized I didn't need them. And it also happens with girls. When others get obsessed, I simply lose interest. The first John Wick movie was a bit of an unexpected hit. Over the years, based on the marketing among other things, I can typically tell if a movie is of any interest to me. There's a certain confidence that a movie carries when it knows it's good. John Wick had that aura, but around that time, Keanu was a bit of a joke. It's hard to remember now, but besides the Matrix trilogy, and if we're being honest, only the first one, Keanu wasn't known for making great movies. Keanu had been nominated for multiple MTV awards throughout his career, but not really for many serious awards. As a matter of fact, he had been nominated multiple times for Razzie Awards for Worst Hector. I don't think he ever won. I didn't look too deep into it. For the most part, Keanu was known to be monotone and fell in the always acts the same category. Because of that and multiple bombs, not too many people were all that interested in the first John Wick movie. But something about it intrigued me. Unfortunately, at the time, I didn't accustom going to the movies by myself, and no one I knew wanted to watch the latest Keanu Reeves motion picture. And so, I missed the movie at the movies. 
but people started hearing reviews. And it became very common to hear, you know what movie I hear is good, John Wick. And the response was always the same. You mean the Keanu Reeves movie? Isn't it about a dog? It might seem strange now that everyone seems to adore Keanu Reeves, but John Wick was a bit of an adrenaline shot to Keanu's career. Keanu was fast approaching Steven Seagal's status. Instead, he had a bit of a Robert Downey Jr. type of resurgence. Not at the level of Robert Downey Jr. What Robert Downey Jr. pulled off is impressive to say the least. A few months after the release of John Wick, I watched it with a friend of mine. We rented the movie online and watched it on my computer with snacks and drinks, which was fun. But certain movies deserve a theatrical watch. John Wick was certainly meant for a movie theater experience. Not that it wasn't enjoyed on a computer monitor, but it wasn't enough. When the credits rolled, I noticed something curious. Eva Longoria was a producer on John Wick. I found it so strange that I had to Google it, because I couldn't imagine actress Eva Longoria being a part of the movie. Eva Longoria of Desperate Housewives fame was in fact a producer on John Wick, something that she didn't seem to be aware of. I suppose it was backed by her production team. I've since watched interviews post John Wick 2, where she claims to have always been very involved with the project. That is the perfect analogy for the response of the John Wick franchise. Keanu went on to get one more Razzie for John Wick the Razzie Redeemer Award. John Wick gained a bit of a cult following, so much so that it was given a second installment, a movie I did watch at the movie theater, a movie that up until recently, I believed I had watched with my friend. Because of that, I thought it was important for us to watch the third chapter together, as it was not tradition. But recently, my friend told me he's yet to watch the second John Wick movie. I came to realize that John Wick 2 was one of the first movies I decided not to wait on others to get dressed and just head to the movies when I had time available. And so, we get to John Wick Chapter 3. John Wick 3 was one of those movies that every time I brought it up, someone would inevitably say, let's watch it when it comes out. In my mind, as long as my friend was there, it didn't matter who else joined. I had to respect the tradition I believed had been put into place that had never actually existed. The day the movie was released I was set to go, but everyone that had invited themselves couldn't make it. I thought it best to wait on them, and so I waited an extra week, and everyone cancelled again. So I tried again, but once again people were unavailable. At this point I had to make a call. The call was simple. I'm going to go watch the movie Tuesday night. If people call, they can join. Otherwise, I'm going on my own. Here's the thing about going to the movies on your own. It's a lot more rewarding. When you go with people, you have to pick seats that are together, which is much more difficult now that most movie theaters aren't general admission. You also have to put up with people's tics. Don't check your phone and remove your smartwatch. I don't need that obnoxious light when I'm watching a movie. You have to put up with quips. Listen, I appreciate a good joke, but when I'm watching a movie, I'm watching a movie. And you have to listen to people's opinion once the picture is over. And I don't really care. I like forming my own thoughts. I feel like I should say, there are some exceptions to these rules. Some of my friends do offer good, thoughtful opinions whose thoughts I value. And some of my friends do provide quality quips. But the smartwatch and phone rule applies to everyone. Just don't. And so, I went to the movies on a Tuesday night. The theater was packed. The only scenes together were in the front row. But I didn't have to worry about that. I got a seat in the row above perfect. Not quite perfect, but it was near perfect. I got myself a medium coffee. Movie tickets on Tuesdays are $5. Medium coffee at the movies are also $5. Hot with no sugar or cream. 
It was late at night, so I didn't finish my coffee as I wanted to sleep early. The movie was delightful. The coffee was smooth. A couple of times I wondered if Keanu was a bit chubbier than he was in Chapter 2. He is in his 50s, but the movie takes place seconds after the second movie. Not a continuity error per se, more like when a comic book features a different artist halfway through the story arc. I believe John Wick Chapter 3 should be enjoyed at the movies. You can't wait for it to be on demand, sure, and it'll still be good, sure. But the experience won't be the same. So I say, if you and your group of friends can't agree on the time, just go watch it when you are free. Let them worry about when they have the time to watch it. And you can discuss it then. Or you can write an essay. And they can read the essay when they're on the toilet. Four stars. Rewatch. Yes.